right, guys. Cheers for getting around the cave. Yeah, here, here. There you go. Step one. <laughs> step one. Or maybe step one was getting unstuck. So. <laughs> In our previous video, I explained my concerns about the weather, wind, and ocean currents and what I look for when planning a southern passage around Cape Hatteras. We've now completed that passage and I've made this video as a follow-up to that weather planning video. Heather and I purchased a vehicle while hanging out in Virginia during hurricane season. It gave us the freedom to enjoy some land-based travel, but presented a problem when the time came to sail Destiny South to Florida. As luck would have it, though, we met a couple awesome brothers at the marina in Virginia who loved sailing and were looking for an offshore adventure. Having Mark and Dave on board to help me sail Destiny gave Heather the freedom to drive our vehicle to Florida. or the exit in this case to the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, we've got pretty good wind. We've got like 10 knots of wind right now, uh, about 120 degrees on our stern, and we're making about six to seven knots. So uh, the trip is starting out great. What day is it, Mark? Today is Wednesday. Our first morning, huh? Our first beautiful morning. Opportunity to round the Cape today. For the Atlantic Ocean, notice how calm it is. If you recall from my last video, this is the exact scenario that I was wanting to encounter out here around the Cape for a southern passage. Here's a look at the exact wind forecast that I relied upon for this passage. Notice how the prediction is for less than five knots of wind as we transit around the Cape and then how the wind fills in behind us in a favorable direction. This is the exact forecast I was waiting for, and we weren't alone. A mass of sailboats were visible on the AIS screen, departing the Chesapeake Bay at the same time that we were. Included in this mass were numerous sailboats sailing in the Salty Dog Regatta to both the Bahamas and the Caribbean. It was a perfect weather window. towards land and 
maybe within like 30 miles of Charleston, get close enough to land, maybe eight or nine miles offshore, where we can get cell phone reception and uh, take a look at Wendy, take a look at the uh, NOAA Hurricane Center, and get some updates on the hurricane to see if, uh, what the latest forecast is. Um, I do have an Iridium Go satellite receiver for predict wind, um, and that's very helpful. Uh, but I would, since there's a hurricane down there, I, I'd want to get the information from NOAA Hurricane Center and to see the big picture on Wendy, uh, Wendy.com, uh, to see how the hurricane is going to affect the area off the eastern coast of Florida. About one o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, the uh, November 4th, and uh, we just made it around the Cape. Uh, we just went around the Diamond Shoals, and the winds are filling in off our port star. So this is morning number two. Uh, we woke up with some clouds. Actually, uh, went to bed with some clouds and put some reefs in the sail just to make sure. Um, we'll see what happens today. I don't know if they're gonna burn off or if they're gonna be with us. So it's Friday morning and we're currently approaching Cape Romaine, which is about 30 miles north of Charleston. Uh, we're gonna go up here to try to get cell phone reception. We'll be offshore about six miles or so. Uh, we're gonna try to get cell phone reception so we can uh, take a look at windy.com and the NOAA Hurricane Center and uh, predict wind online and uh, get a bit better picture of what this hurricane is doing and how it's gonna affect our passage to St. Augustine. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. What's going on, guys? Oh, well, just sending some text to my wife. So get up, son. After reviewing the new weather information, we made a unanimous decision to continue our passage to St. Augustine. We knew the rest of the passage would be a bit windier and rougher than we would like, but didn't see it as being unsafe. And so it wasn't worth putting in at Charleston only to have to wait who knows how long for another weather window to complete the passage. To make sure we stayed safe, we only had to follow three rules. Any words of wisdom, Dave? Just uh, hope we uh, follow the three rules. <laughs> don't fall overboard, don't hit anything, and don't let anybody hit us. <laughs>
Unfortunately, we didn't capture any video of our approach or entrance into the St. Augustine Harbor, but we did make it safe and sound to our boat slip at the foot of the beautiful Bridge of Lions. I want to give a special thanks and dedicate this video to brothers Mark and Dave. I can't tell you guys how lucky and thankful I was to have both of you on this voyage. Is this, uh, what is this, the second or third day at sea? <laughs> this is third day. Third, third, day. third day at sea and my crew members are talking about poop and toilets in the boat. <laughs> Life at sea. Life at sea.